Welcome to Britain's Rare Guitars. I'm Gareth Circuit. And I'm Becky Baldwin. And today we've got some really cool guests for you. But first I want to introduce Ben Morgan from the Gear Garage. The first time I heard Guns N' Roses, it was Slash. I heard him play and I heard him on the radio and I was like, I want to do that. And then I picked up a guitar and that's it really. Never looked back since. I think I got my first guitar for my um, 13th birthday. In fact, I remember going into the downstairs loo where my mum had hidden a guitar and just losing my mind. <laughs> so I got my first bass when I was 13. Um, I became interested in it from uh, my sister started playing electric guitar and some of my best friends at school started playing electric guitar as well. And I kind of I was interested in what they were doing. I wanted to join in, but I didn't want to copy them. Then I started noticing that bass players always had a really cool style and, uh, you know, like Lemmy of Motorhead and uh, Frankie of the Darkness and all these bands I was starting to get interested in. Uh, the bass player always looked really cool and I didn't really know what it was at first, just like a big guitar, but, um, but I, I knew that that was what I wanted to do. So I always knew that I wanted to play rock and metal. You become interested in, in rock music and you know it has to be like a black bass and it has to look cool. But I guess, you know, I didn't know how my, my taste would, would change and my style of playing would change. But all I knew is that I, I liked rock music and I liked like loud stuff. <laughs> University totally, uh, totally changed my career path. Like I didn't realize it at the time. Um, I thought I knew everything already and I thought I was going to, you know, maybe work part time but spend most of my life uh, working with a band and just rehearsing and, you know, making it the old school way. Um, but when I started playing with other people there, I realised, like, well, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. Because, um, uh, you know, in the small town I was from, maybe, you know, I was the base, best bass player in the school and everyone did come to me for that. But uh, once you put, get put in a bigger pool with a lot of better people, you really have to sink or swim. So um, it really made me improve my playing more, really practice hard, um, listen to other people, and work with those of really interesting musicians, and also just learn from great tutors. So from there, I have met some other students. Uh, together, we formed a new school ourselves when we, when we graduated. So we run a school called Bristol Rock Centre, and we teach guitar bass drums to like loads of students now so yeah it improved in you know in the kind of networking way in the actual playing way and in the business and, and everything like I'm so glad I did it. I didn't really have many lessons I'm quite I'm mostly self-taught but I did have one or two like group lessons at this rock school thing where we just went and learned songs basically um, but yeah, the guitar teacher there, who's, who is now a good friend of mine, went to ACM and he told me all about it. So I sent in an in a audition tape and yeah, I got in. Well, I used my strap because I, I wouldn't say I use it for the most things, to be honest, but it's my workhorse. You know, because it's, it's my strap's got a humbucker in it and single coils, I can get the best of both worlds really quickly. Um, but I do own humbucker guitars as well. I've got a uh, Epiphone Black Beauty, a, a Gibson SG, um, and I do like to use my Ibanez for the shredding. But yeah, I, I use that that fender for, uh, for main, most most things because it's a workhorse. So I'm endorsed by uh, Daddario Strings, and that was a really big one for me. Like I always wanted to, I always thought they were the best string brand, and really wanted to get them. And people just, I oh, know you got, you should go for more for local companies. Yeah, you know, get them, and then and then I got that endorsement, and I was like, yes. Um, so yeah, they're really great. Um, and using their NYXL uh, strings, they're kind of long lasting ones. Um, and then since we've been going around with Britain's Rare Guitars actually, it's been a lot easier because we're speaking to the, the companies and we've got a film crew and everyone thinks like, <laughs> we, <laughs> everyone sees us and goes like, oh, I want to speak to them. And then they're like, oh, you play? Oh, I'll check out this and that. So it's been, you know, re leading through to good things. So I think professional musicians, they're not, um, they're not as much on the road as they, as they were before. So a lot of musicians that earn money are doing a various, like a big variety of things that, that, they're, um, that are making their income. And playing in a band is only a small part of it, or it's just not part of it at all. 
but if you want to do an original band, even though there are venues that will pay you for the music and people are, so the fans are supportive, it's so hard to get your, um, your music out there and everything's got gatekeepers that you need to like appeal, appeal to somehow. Um, and it just takes a lot of money through like music videos and stuff. So um, there isn't much money in it being on the road. I don't think people are going to see live music as much as they used to. I don't think as many venues are sustaining uh, that kind of thing as much as they used to, but, um, but it is a lot of fun. You, you do it because you love it. I used to do five days a week of teaching and well, quite frankly it was too much. So now I do like two or three days of teaching and the, and the rest of the days I do other things, videos, do this and yeah. But I do think it is, it, it is multiple things. You can't just do one thing. There's just, it's fingers in pies, isn't it? Um, I'm actually writing a book for little kids to start learning guitar. So hopefully that'll be uh, published next year or something. Um, but apart from that, I haven't really thought about, about it, to be honest. <laughs> I just take, take the day as it comes, you know. I'm hoping in the, in the next five or six years, I'm hoping the original band, um, Hands Off Gretel, will start getting to the next level where I can actually, I can get paid to, to do it. And it can be my main income. And, you know, then I'll just have downtime in between tours where I'll do this kind of thing, like presenting, teaching and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's all I want is just for, to, to work with an original band and, and for, for either, either one of them, so Hands on Gretel Fury or Dorja to like, get to a point where we can live off this and make this the main thing that we do. Firstly, go to more gigs. It's always good to see musicians. It's always good to get into that scene. Um, don't be shy of talking to people. And secondly, keep learning new things. Because if you, if you stay on one genre, you'll always sound like that genre. And that's cool if you want to do that, but in the real world, you need to be able to play most things. Um, so yeah, I would suggest learning, just keep learning new things. I would say to her to just practice loads, but mostly uh, listen to other people as much as possible. Listen, uh, get involved with other bands as much as possible, like reach out to to a variety of different styles of music and different kinds of musicians with different backgrounds. Music work is hard to come by, so uh, if you do get offered it, even if you think, oh no, I can't do that, um, if you just say yeah and then just learn how to do it as you go along, then that really, that's like the, the best thing you can do. So, um, you know, even when you're just starting out, um, just getting involved with as many different things as possible is going to give you all the skills that, that you're going to come across needing later on. I'm tired, jumping around with your sad theory Warm house and I'm in traffic Is it easier? It's boring sitting around to something Get out of the house, I'm tired of seeing it. The same old walls And I've always been a dreamer Hoping one day you'd realize Best thing happened to you was right in front of your eyes Never said Say what I mean. I think you felt the same. Let's be honest, never really made the effort. You were the one to end it, even though you're in the wrong. Find it funny how you always play the victim. You were the one to end it, but I had no one. And I've always been a dreamer.
sé 